Greetings, dear people of Trinity. Thank you for joining me um, for a reflection this week, coming up to the third Sunday of Advent. It's hard to believe. Years ago, a friend of mine gave me a reproduction of a watercolor and ink drawing. Here it is. You may not be able to see it very well, but I hope you get the spirit and color of it. On the back, it reads by Brian Andreas, who lives with his wife and two young sons in a big old house where they make soup and art and stories as often as they can. The print is called Unheard Music, and the words on the front are, don't you hear, she asked, and I shook my head, no. And then she started to dance and suddenly there was music everywhere and it went on for a very long time. And when I finally found the words, all I could say was, thank you. Something my granddaughter Rory does when we go outside, whether it's to the beach, to the park, or even just out the back door, she launches in to her Rory dance. That is, she takes off. She just takes off. There's not necessarily a clear destination, as far as I can tell, though she loves to run after birds and waves. She just takes off running. And then she'll stop abruptly, and she'll stomp her feet, or wave at the birds, or kick at the waves. And then, when she wants to, she takes off again. You won't be surprised to hear that I run after her, following her every movement dancing the Rory dance with Rory brings me a pure joy, a sense of freedom of the moment, an utter forgetfulness of everything else that I haven't experienced in a while, that forgetfulness, that presence in the moment. I've missed it. In fact, I haven't, I've missed it so much I have forgotten that I miss it, but I need it. It makes me breathless, literally. And all I can say is, Thank you. Why do I bring up Rory's dancing? Because the Reverend Cameron Trimble's somewhat daily devotion focused today on what she calls the wild creativity in us. And I want to share it with you because I think it's really, really important. She writes, each of us has a source of wild creativity in us. We are built to give birth, to bring things, ideas, and people to life. At our deepest core, we are created to write, sing, dance, and love new life into being. We are born wild, in tune with our intuitions of how to make a more beautiful world. All too early in life, our domesticated elders tell us to tame this wild creativity. We might become too creative, too generative, too free. We might test social boundaries or question authority. We might get arrogant or too sure of ourselves or discover we're more powerful than even we knew. We're told from a young age to hold back, to moderate, to question our ability to contribute from our wilding and wise ways. If you follow this advice, Cameron Trimble writes, it kills your soul. I'm convinced that we are living in the midst of an awakening of our wild souls. Some of us I've come to call wisdom warriors, and they sense a new level of creativity emerging in ourselves one that leads us on the healing path to a deeper awareness of the creative force that is within. If you are one of those, you aren't crazy. The world is. Keep leading us forward with the truth you know in the deepest parts of your soul. It's your authentic wildness, not your conformity, that the world really needs. And so, dear friends, are you a wisdom warrior? Do you need a wisdom warrior to inspire your creativity, the wild creativity within you? Perhaps you are a wisdom warrior, though you may never have known it or you have forgotten. I said last week that when despair for the world descends upon me, I go into the peace of wild things. But I never thought 
that I might be a wild thing. Thank you, Rory, for inspiring me to dance. Thank you, Cameron Trimble, for your call to us all to be wildly creative, to build a better world. It fills me in this moment with hope. Amen.